This is the story of how the whale got his throat, and it happened just so. Long ago, in the high and far off times, when the world was new, deep, deep in the sea, there lived a whale called Smiler. And he ate fishes. He ate the starfish and the garfish and the crab and the dub and the place and the dace. And the skate and his mate. And the mackerel, and the pickerel, and the really, truly, twirly, whirly eel. Till at last, there was only one small fish left in all the sea. And he was a small stoot fish called Pingo. And with great stuteness, he swam behind the great whale's ear, where he was safe from his huge jaws. I'm hungry, said the whale. All the fish are gone, and there's nothing left to eat. Oh, noble and generous brother, said the small stute fish in a small stute voice. Have you ever tasted man? No, said the whale. What's it like? Nice, said Pingo. Nice, but nubbly. Then fetch me one, roared the whale. Well, said the stewed fish, if you swim to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, you will find, sitting on a raft, in a pair of blue canvas trousers held up by a pair of suspenders, you must not forget the suspenders, with a jackknife in his hand, a man in the shape of a shipwrecked mariner called Mr. Henry Albert Bivens A.B., who, it is only fair to tell you, is a Scotsman and a man of infinite resource and sagacity. Then Smiler swam up behind the mariner and opened his mouth back and back and back and swallowed Mr. Albert Bivens, A.B., and the blue canvas trousers, and the suspenders, which you must not forget, and the jackknife. He swallowed them all down into his warm, dark inside cupboards. But as soon as the mariner, who, remember, was a man of infinite resource and sagacity, found himself inside the whale's warm, dark inside cupboards, he stumped and he bumped, and he pranced and he danced, and he banged and he clanged, and he hit and he bit, and he leapt and he crept, and he hopped and he dropped, and he danced hornpipes where he shouldn't.
and he gave the whale the most terrible hiccups. You were right, Pingle, he hicked. This man is very nubbly. What shall I do with him? Tell him to come out, said the stute fish. So the whale called down his own throat to the shipwrecked mariner. Ho oh, there, Mr. Albert Bivens, A.B. Come out at once and behave yourself. Oh no, said the mariner. And remember, he was a man of infinite resource and sagacity. Take me directly to my native land of Scotland, back to my mother and the girl I'm to marry. And I'll think about the possibility of coming out. And he began to dance more than ever. So the whale set off as fast as his hiccups would allow to the shores of Scotland. Deep inside the whale's warm, dark cupboards, the mariner considered how he might prevent that greedy smiler from eating up all the fishes in the sea. And he looked at his raft. And he looked at his suspenders. You mustn't forget those suspenders. And he looked at his jackknife. And he thought, I have the answer. Scotland ahead, called out the small stute fish, and Smiler thankfully swam up on shore, for it had been a very long swim, especially what with having hiccups and all. And the whale opened his mouth wide and wide and wide, saying, I have brought you to your native shore. Now please come out from my throat, Mr. Albert Bivens, A.B. Mr. Albert Bivens, A.B., did. But he heaved up behind him his raft, now all cut into little square holes like a grating. And he fitted it good and tight in the whale's throat, so that he could neither cough up nor swallow down. And he tied it firm with his suspenders. Now you know why you were not to forget the suspenders. Then he recited this parting lament. By means of a grating, I have stopped your eating. And he went off home to his mother and the girl he was to marry. And they all lived happily ever after. Particularly the small stute fish called Pingo. Cause now the whale could never be able to eat him. The grating was stuck in Smiler's throat forever and always, so that he could neither cough up nor swallow down anything but the very tiniest of fishes. Since that day, all the whales you will ever see in the deep, deep sea never can eat you up, cause they have gratings held tight in their throats by suspenders, precisely like Smiler, the first and greediest whale in the world.